So I have a project here with live drums that consists of a kick, snare, rack, floor tom, overheads, and hi-hats. But I want to use a drum library like Drum Daddy or something else on it to replace the kick, snare, and toms. In order to do that, I need to turn those transients for the kick, snare, and toms into MIDI notes. So this is how you do it. I'm going to start with the kick because it's going to be the same for every drum track. Um, so now that I have my kick track highlighted, go to the kick track, effects, click on effects, and we are going to type in trigger. Um, then I'm going to select JS Audio MIDI Drum Trigger. Hit add. Cool beans, here that is. Then I'm going to hold down Shift, Option, Command, T, which will pull up the transient detection settings. Once I have this little screen pulled up, I want to check off this uh, second box here that says Display, Threshold, and Media Items, whatever. Just check it. And what that does is it pulls up these two little lines here, which shows you the threshold that you have right here, which is going to help you determine what your threshold should be on that trigger plugin we just opened down here. So basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have all the hits, or at least all the hits you can get in between these two lines. You don't want it to be too high or else you're going to miss some. You don't want to be too low because if it's down here like this, it's going to miss trigger and it's going to add too many hits for each hit or maybe just miss some. So you want it right in the sweet spot, right where it's just kind of picking up the peaks. And on a kick like this, it's going to be a lot easier. On the snare, it's going to get a little trickier. So it looks like the kick sweet spot is about negative... 12-ish, maybe. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, trigger plugin that I have. And on the first two little uh, sections right here, which is the open threshold and close threshold, I'm going to change it to negative 12.8. Cool. Um, I can close these. Now I'm going to right click on that drum track. And then I'm going to scroll down to where it right here where it says apply track effects to items as new take MIDI output and you click on it. And what that did was is it turned those transients into MIDI notes. And uh, so now that I have these transients turned into MIDI notes, let's double click on that MIDI track. And the only problem is, is it kind of just threw them onto a random note. Um, it's probably not going to be where the kick is in a uh, drum library that you're using. Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to, now that I have this kick track done, I'm going to uh, right click, select all, and me personally, I would just turn all the velocities up all the way, just because I like to start with all the velocities up all the way and then go in and manually turn the ones down that are supposed to be turned down, just to kind of give it a little more humanized feel. Um, I feel like the velocity de detection on here doesn't work that well. So I got my velocities turned up all the way. And then with all the kick hits still selected, I'm going to right click on one of the kick hits. And then I'm going to scroll down to event properties. And this is going to give me the option to be able to move these uh, kick notes down to the correct key for the drum library I'm using, which um, I'm using Drum Daddy. And I think the way I have Drum Daddy set up in Reaper right now, the kick is actually on uh, C2. So I'm going to look for C2. And I'm going to select C2 uh, right here. Apply. Okay. And that should be it for that kick for now. Now, uh, do the exact same thing for the snare. So I'm going to highlight the snare track. Um, effects. We're going to add in the uh, audio to MIDI drum trigger. And then I'm going to uh, hold down Shift, Option, Command, T, which will bring up my transient detection. Uh, there we go. You have to have the uh, track highlighted, apparently, to see the uh, little threshold bars. Didn't know that. Okay, so on the snare, there's definitely going to be some ghost notes or some, you know, hits on the fills and rolls that probably won't be able to get detected without messing up the other big hits, which is fine because if you have a couple ghost notes or a couple hits on the fills missing, you could always just punch them in by hand. So I want to try to get at least most of the notes that I can to pick up in this little section in this threshold. So, um, and it looks like, cause if you see there's two little hits here, um, there's probably no way I'm going to be able to pick those up successfully without having these other notes miss trigger and mess up. So I'm just going to kind of ignore those for now 
and it looks like the sweet spot for this is probably negative 10 ish. So I'm going to do negative 10.6. Okay, uh, right click on that track and then click on the same thing, the uh, MIDI output, apply track, whatever. Cool beans, and that turned all of those into MIDI notes. So now I'm gonna click on that MIDI track. Let's zoom in here. Select all, I'm gonna turn those up as well. And then you wanna right click on it, go to event properties and then change the note to wherever the snare is in whatever library you're using. Uh, for me, I'm using Drum Daddy, and right now that is set to D2. So I'm gonna set it to D2. Uh, there it is, apply, okay. And like I said, it probably missed a couple little hits, which is fine, because what you can do is, you can just kind of go in, man, I do not know Reaper that well, and you can kind of just look at it and tell where these hits are supposed to go. It looks like there's supposed to be a little hit here. I could punch in that hit. And then it looks like there's another little hit about right here. So I'm gonna punch in that hit. And then you can change the MIDI accordingly to those little hits like this. Oh, here's a fill, here's a drum fill. I'm gonna add in this drum fill just for the hell of it for this video right now to show you how easy this is. Cool. So here is my drum fill. Looks like we got a hit going uh, here and there. And then there and there. I, I don't know if that one's there. That's kind of hard to tell. You know, that is a little hard to tell. And there and there. So let's turn those up. And it looks like I got another hit about there. Cool. So that's the snare. And that's how easy it is to kind of just add in the little hits that were missed. So now let's do the rack tom. I'm going to highlight the rack, uh, add trigger to the rack track. Then I'm going to hold down shift command option T. Uh, highlight the rack track or else I don't see the threshold lines and then we just want to pick that sweet spot for that rack which looks like we'll do negative 10 I feel like negative 10 should be fine highlight all uh, select all I'm gonna turn up all the hits and then right click on that hit, uh, event properties. I believe the rack tom, this is rack one. I think this is G2, if I remember correctly. Hopefully I'm not wrong, because that'll be really awkward. Apply, okay. Now we have the floor tom, same exact method. Looks like the floor tom threshold is negative 6.6. And then I think the floor tom is E2, 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 ET, E2, apply, okay. So now I have each drum track converted into MIDI notes, um, but the way it's set up right now, um, each MIDI track is connected to that specific audio track, such as the kick MIDI is connected to the kick audio track. So for what I'm personally trying to do, it's not really helping me. For some people, this might be fine. But if I want to use this for Drum Daddy or another drum library, it's not really going to help me. Unless I want to have like a drum library open for five separate MIDI tracks, which is just annoying because that's going to take up a lot of CPU and just a lot of nonsense. So to put these all into one MIDI track so I can just use 
one drum daddy for all of them, I'm going to hold down on an Apple, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on each of these MIDI tracks that we just created. So I'm going to click on the kick, snare, rack, and the floor. So now I have these four highlighted. And then I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to click Export MIDI. Or Export Project MIDI, I guess I should say. Click on it. Okay, so now it's giving me the option to export the entire project or just time selection only. I'm going to do, time, I'm going to do the entire project just because there's only MIDI in this project when the drums are being played. Um, and then it gives you the option uh, if you want to do all MIDI or selected tracks only or selected items only. I'm going to do selected tracks only because I only want to export these four specific tracks. So then down here is where it's a little more important for what I'm trying to do. You can either export them into individual MIDI tracks to where the kick, the snare, and the rack, and the floor will each be their own MIDI track or which would be this one right here. Or you can click Merge to single MIDI track to make all four of those tracks into one, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to click Merge to single MIDI track. And then over here, you can choose where to save it. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. It doesn't matter right now for this video. So I'm going to hit OK. And then that's telling me that it just worked successfully. So close. And then now I'm going to mute these because these don't really matter to me at the moment. Then I'm going to scroll down. This is my track with Drum Daddy on it. So now if I go to my desktop, I should see the MIDI I just exported. If I bring it in. Um, okay. I don't know what that was. Okay. Then we'll bring it all the way to the beginning so it matches the live drums. Now my MIDI should be completely lined up. And that's how you do it on Reaper. And like I said, you might have to go in, fix some ghost notes. There might be some flam hits missing. But 95% of the drums should be there, which should be very, very helpful. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad we all got through this together. I hope this was very helpful. Thank you for watching.